Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio and welcome to a one day build. I am stealing that from Adam Savage, please forgive me. Except for the fact that as much as I love Adam, he doesn't actually do one day builds. This is gonna be done in, in, in one, one and done. It's a small hand plane. I am building a, a travel gu guitar, an acoustic travel guitar, a small, tiny, beautiful thing. And uh, it's going to be a hand tool only build, as much as I can manage. And uh, it's all fun and games, except for the fact that I would quite like to, in that build, this weekend actually, install a couple of pieces of carbon fiber stiffening rods just in the neck. Now this is four mil by four mil, and I could quite easily use the same technique that I used beforehand, which was uh, sculpel down the lines and then just chisel it out. A uh, little bit of uh, sawing and, and you're done. But any excuse to add a new hand plane to the collection uh, is, is something that has to be done. And here we are. I'm gonna make a tiny little rebate plane, rabbit plane, I suppose, if you're in America. Uh, well, I'm going to attempt to make a tiny little rabbit plane. Burn it. Ah, <laughs> yay! So this is a traditional rebate plane, uh, or rabbit plane, minus the blade. The, the, the little details that you've got, like the, the, the chamfers on the edge, are particularly beautiful. That shape is both gorgeous and serves a purpose. Now, another option is for me to have an external, because we're talking about something that's only four millimeters wide, I could have an external uh, slot into which uh, I could insert my wedge. Uh, but, well, I don't know. Now in this box is the set of planes that, uh, that kicked this whole video off. I am going to be restoring these and I will be doing it uh, at the very least in a, in a video. Now, this one, I seriously considered actually just customizing this for the purpose. It's got curved sides. Um, it's almost closer to a coach builder's uh, plane, actually. And uh, that's the process. So I said that that serves a purpose there, that hole, same thing here. You've got an area, um, I don't have anything pointy to point with, there we go. You've got an area there that, and that's where your shavings need to uh, escape. Now, of course, I could just use one of the small router planes, but that means that I don't get to make a new rabbit rebate dado plane kind of a thing. And that would be sad, wouldn't it? It would be just actually terrible. I suppose the, the debate really is, do I need another plane? It's getting, it's getting hot in here. Merch, go check it out, yeah. No, I'm not gonna make a router plane instead of uh, a, a rebate plane. Uh, now, so the issue is I'm creating, the, the job for which I'm building this plane is, it's a slot that is blind, i.e. It's, it's cut off at either end. And uh, the plane isn't gonna do all of that unless I make it into a bullnose rebate plane or I go utterly insane and make one with a removable nose, or toe, not nose. So here's a gorgeous little chunk of, it feels like European boxwood. Um, and I'm thinking about using this, dead insect, of course. I'm thinking about using this to make this tool. And uh, maybe something along those lines, actually. All right, I'm gonna get a piece of paper and do some drawing. Now, I'm not one of those people that thinks that uh, the exact angle is uh, be all, end all. But in the interests of strength and just stability, I'm gonna go 45 degrees. We're not gonna be doing much, much cutting, but it is inside a 
the rebate and uh, needs some strength. So I suppose I need to actually find a blade before I go much further. The option I've got here is I can use a section of four millimeter brass or boxwood or, or whatever, and then just bolt on a couple of side pieces, which of course would look like that. That gives you the strength and it means that cutting the internals, it's just easier. What it makes easier, sorry, is cutting that. I'm literally just gonna copy this wedge, ha ha. So you've got the thickness of your blade, then you've got a wedge shape going in there. So the internal section would be that shape. Am I gonna make it easier for myself by using multiple pieces? Or am I gonna be a purist and essentially engage in self-flagellation by making it more difficult than it really needs to be? Making a hand plane out of a single piece of boxwood is difficult. Getting those angles absolutely correct, using chisels and planes and floats and all of that jazz, especially at that, you know, uh, at this tiny scale, difficult. But that's part of the fun, isn't it? I need a blade. Okay. Now, this, this is option number one. I could take this blade, I could take an angle grinder and just slice a chunk off. I would almost certainly ruin the temper. I would, uh, <laughs> and that would put me in a temper. What a bad joke. Uh, I'm a father, please forgive me. It's just de rigueur. Or, or I could do it the easy way. I could sacrifice a chisel. Not this one. <laughs> Not this one, I love this one. But uh, I could find myself a, a four mil chisel and just chop that off far away from the edge and know that it's got the right temper and uh, will be nice and hard and, and perfectly fine. And, and I have like a hundred over there and, and there's more in the drawers. I've got, I've got a drawer, I've got a drawer full of tangless chisels and gouges somewhere. I don't know where. Now the problem is this is heavy as hell and currently in the way. I don't even know if I actually want it, but anyway, off we go. Lift, lift with your back, yes? I just learned something. Prepare the place you're gonna put the thing first before you get there. Um, does this feel voyeuristic in any way, looking through my drawers? So every time a, a chisel or a gouge comes through that doesn't have a handle through vintagetoolshop.com, it gets put in a drawer and every now and then I just grab them thing thinking, I've got time, I can do that at home, no worries. This is how you end up with this many tools in need of restoration. I think, I think I'm officially stupid. I've got a whole cabinet here of tools to repair. Surely the handleless chisels are in the cabinet of tools to repair. That would make sense, would that make sense? That would make sense. The first damn drawer I'd open, ah! Okay. All right, what's the bit? It's all gouges. Ooh, you got snapped. It's all gouges. And a skew chisel. The hunt continues. There are some tools in here. Cranked gouge there. Oh my God, it's a tiny plane. Uh, I, I've looked through every single drawer I have. <clears throat> I'm tearing up. It's too much like hard work. Um, I'm going to check a toolbox up at the house and I'm going to see. Just found a chisel, guys.
<laughs> okay. Um, yeah. This is a JB Addison Sons. It is about 4.6 millimeters wide. And of course, it was on my workbench this whole time. This is a chisel I'm going to sacrifice. It's a JB Addison Sons. And I love this chisel. I've had it for, I've been using it for probably more than a decade now, but its sacrifice will be appreciated. Okay. Um, first things first, I need to grind this down to actually just a little bit less than four millimeters, I would say. Goggles. Simple. So I'm just gonna take just over half a millimeter off uh, this chisel, slowly and carefully. So this is 120 grit. This is an incredible tool. Okay, so yes, as a machine, this does heat your tools up. So as you, uh, as you heat the blade up, you, you wet it first and put water pulls on the blade. And uh, as you carve, as you carve away the material, it warms up and uh, you, know, you know you need to wet it again when the water starts disappearing. And if you do that, well, you've got no problems. It's also 10 times faster than a tormac or anything like that ever would be. There we go. Perfect. We're a fraction under you know, isotunes. Crimson 10 gets you uh, a, a tenner off. Um, we're a fraction underneath four millimeters and uh, we haven't ruined the temper. In fact, the edge of the blade is still sharp. So uh, there we go. I've got a little Wow, fully charged battery Dremel. Woohoo. What is it about leather, man? Every, I am, I'm sitting here, I've obviously got it on my belt. I use it multiple times a day on the regular. And nine times out of 10, I'm within a meter of all of my other pliers and things. It's just, I love using them. This is the Looking Through Drawers YouTube channel for today. Aha! That's what we want, isn't it? There we go. Cut off disc, quick release. Cool, isn't it? Now I think that this is going to be powerful enough to make this cut. I will be putting those on. And a mask. I don't want to breathe in all that. I am so sorry. I am going to reuse the handle at some point. We have a blade. That was cool. A minute silence for the poor chisel. That is no more. Uh, anyway, I'm just going to get the burr off. Yet another use for the Crimson Guitars fret leveling beam. Chunk of uh, boxwood, I think it's European box, and uh, it should be fine. The grain is going like there, which is, which is okay. The best bet is if I chop a section off and then use the middle section for this plane. I'm going to do this the easier way. I'm going to make this in three pieces. So I want to cut a strip of wood down the side, plane that nice and flat, and that'll be uh, one, one and a half, two millimeters wide. And that will be the two outside sides. And then I want a section that is 
uh, four mil or just over four millimeters wide, uh, and that will be where the blade goes and all of that. So I've got a bit of material to remove, but better too big than too small. Masking tape and super glue. That is what is required at this stage. Burnish it down with the bottom of the uh, super glue pot and keeping away from the edges of the uh, masking tape. This is invariably better than almost all double sided tapes I've ever experienced. There's no movement as long as you burnish the tape down. It's very, very easy to rip up that way, but strong laterally. It's a very cool trick. Now, planing down something is, that is essentially a veneer is, it's always, it's always problematic. But again, the masking tape and superglue trick just, just does it, makes the whole thing easy. Uh, or at least much less likely to have catastrophic results. Burnish, burnish, accelerator, and then you line up the tape and you're done. Is that done? More planing. So that's the issue with thin stock. That'll do nicely. Now this is super thin and delicate, but again, with the grain, should do okay. Now, I just need the two pieces from here, super thin, one and a half mil, maybe two mil, and uh, we're good. So this is my... Okay, this is the wedge that I want to copy, but you mustn't forget that the blade has a wedge shape to it as well. So put your blade in place, and then I don't want that to go too deep, although obviously it'll be made out of boxwood and can be changed, because that's now the angle where I want to cut, and it's a combination of these two pieces. Now, I want it to be about that deep, and the front just for fun. I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna drill that hole later. Now the mouth of the plane needs to be as tight as humanly possible. Option number one, well, as if the blade almost doesn't exist. That'll go there, the blade won't exist, and we'll be okay. So yeah, now it's a case of cutting this out. These pieces will just be glued on the, on the outside to hold it together. I'm gonna to use a jeweler's vise or a jeweler's bench jig uh, just because this is a relatively small part. I could do it on the bandsaw, but uh, I would rather use um, a fine toothed inlay saw and get to where we want. Now, the outline I'm gonna leave a little bit big because we'll just plane that down to, to size later. It's the internals that at this stage are, are important. There we go. So that's the front of that then. I could probably do with a slightly coarser blade. <laughs> Said I needed a coarser blade, didn't I? Okay. Constantly break blades. Uh, it's just the way it goes. If you twist uh, in any way, it, it just happens. Um, and just as you use them, they go blunt fairly, fairly quickly anyway, so it's a blessing in disguise. So now I'm using a, um, a skip tooth blade that's probably actually designed, well, it is designed for uh, an electronic saw, but uh, it does the job. Okay. And uh, because it's skipped toothed, let me get to the end. Uh, because it's skipped tooth, uh, essentially two out of every three teeth have been removed from the blade at manufacturing, and it means that it clears a lot more dust and therefore cuts a lot faster. 
and uh, we're ideal. Now I'll keep the uh, blade as close to the edge of the jeweler's jig as I can. And uh, <laughs> Using a hand plane to make a hand plane. How cyclical. I like it. So there we go. That's the inside of our plane all sorted. And then it's literally just a case of gluing these on. One, that's my height. Two, I think that skip tooth blade is actually going to be too coarse for this. I'm just going to go make these cuts with a little Japanese pull pull blade that we use for uh, for acoustic guitar building. That's that position. That looks about right for that position. There we go. And then this just goes on the outside and we've got a plane. You should never do things in a rush, especially things like this. But I'm in a rush. I'm actually live streaming this entire plane build on the Crimson Guitars Extras channel. Uh, there are uh, about 100 people watching it and uh, they've got a completely different view of how I work or don't work and uh, are steadily watching me go and descend into, ca into madness. Yeah, madness and uh, caffeine withdrawal actually because I haven't taken the time to stop and go and make myself another cup of coffee. Um, only the fourth one of the day. So that being said, I am not going to use standard wood glue for this. I am just gonna use some super glue, which is an absolutely valid glue to use. It's just with larger woodworking projects, of course you don't use super glue. Uh, with a shock, it tends to shear and there's, there's issues with that. Wood glue is designed for wood, but for a small thing like this, that isn't gonna be thrown about the place, this will be fine. So judge me in the comments, fight me, I will reply. I will. Okay, and with this clamped down, I've actually got the base of my plane sorted. So when, I, when it comes to gluing this one on, I can just get it in place and uh, and everything will glue down and we'll, we'll be fine. Here we go. This is the thickest super glue we sell at uh, crimsonguitars.com. <laughs> okay, jump the gun, jump the gun. Fine. She there. And I want you there. There we go. And this will cure much faster. 30 seconds later. And we're okay. Tiny gun. You might have noticed I collect tiny tools. I love tiny tools. So that goes on there. The sole then will be absolutely square. Excellent. You'll notice when I, when I put this piece down, I put it down and then squeezed it that way. That was to minimize any glue squeeze out in the area where the, uh, the blade and the wedge are gonna be going. But just clean that up and we should be okay. Now this other piece, Had time for uh, coffee and a scone. <sighs> Let's see if it's uh, super glued to the thing. Yes, it has. Good thing I, uh, it's a very, very good thing I remembered to put the uh, masking tape on there. And there we go. So there we are. That's lined up nicely. 
but the depth stops, they are not. And it's only very, very slightly out. That'll do. That off. Little piece at the front. Coming together. And I'm just going to plane the top flat. There we go. That'll do. Next up, it is uh, Crimson Guitars fret leveling beam. And uh, these are precision ground, absolutely flat. So we need to make a little cut, almost the uh, Fibonacci spiral, actually, I think. So we'll do that and then uh, I want to make a, a notch and then nice little chamfer. Maybe a little notch there. Just for just for fun. Back to this saw, it's still got a skip tooth blade in it. an old large fret in dressing piles that uh, Crimson used to sell and uh, because it's got a, a nice square safe edge here I use it for a lot of this sort of stuff it's much crisper than what you get on a on a standard file it's commercially available just going through. So a few more passes, just a tickle. And that'll be beautiful. On to El Wedgeruni. Okay, so I've got a small chunk of, uh, of wood here. It is uh, basically the right width already. And yes, down that end is perfect. So I need to do a little bit of planing and we'll be okay. So that's the big one there. And I want my curve to start. there and for the sense of completeness I'm going to use that shape there as the exact shape at the end of the wedge. Should do nicely. So in the chat the, uh, the people who are watching the live stream version of this on the Crimson Guitars Extras channel are currently voting on what we should call this plane. And I think that it's only fair that we get the people in who are watching the, uh, the finally edited video. So in the comments below, what do you think we should call this plane? My favorite so far, we've had Lucy, we've had Joy, we've had uh, my favorite, which is Jessica Rebate. And uh, 
see if you can uh, be tunnier than that. Eh? Yeah. So what I'm thinking is to carry that curve around because um, that wedge is actually a pretty big wedge, really. If I follow that curve around, it uh, creates the Fibonacci thing um, and it's pretty cool. I am also, we've got the tiny little bevel on there. You don't often see bevels on the, um, on the wedge itself, but I like the idea of putting a bevel and do that on either side. If this proves to be removing too much strength from the wedge, I can always replace it. Time for some guitar finishing oil. I'm really rather happy with this. But will it cut? We have a guide. We have a tiny little plane. And it didn't work. It knocked the blade straight out. So that wedge A little bit actually too narrow. So the fact that I've got oil inside is uh, it's making it slip for one and for two it's potentially an issue that uh, uh, just through the sanding process I've made the wedge just a little bit too narrow for the slot actually and it is um, uh, sniping just a little bit. Now, we don't have, we've got these particularly fine walls here, and I don't want to, uh, by whacking it in there too hard, we're going to end up with breakages. Sand the uh, base down just a fraction. I'm just going to run a little square needle file in here just to rough it up a little bit. I think what I said earlier about uh, me carving that circle out, maybe weakening the tip of the uh, wedge a bit too much, that might be something that's happening. Or literally the, uh, um, the entire, the tool is a little bit too, too weak just because of those thin walls and it might be flexing. In which case we've got, <laughs> A plane that looks great, but is pretty useless. Yeah, that's so... I'm using the blade itself to just uh, go in there and scrape the finish away, actually. Why does it go wrong when people are watching? So it cuts okay on the edge. Yeah, so my uh, my wedge is is twisting inside, and that's what the issue is. Okay, come on then. Uh, so the twist was the issue. I have just temporarily glued a tiny little slab of super glue sandpaper 
onto the side of the wedge to make the wedge not twist in the, uh, in the slot. And that, I hope, means that we are gonna be okay. Let's see. Ha ha! And thus the cut begins. So let's get this out of the way. So it's all about geometry. Baby. Ah, okay, interesting. I don't have I don't have a wide enough mouth yet. Not for taking the sort of cuts that I'm trying to do here. So open that up. Now the trick is to put it down like that, and then as you knock that in, it uh, pushes the blade out just enough to be of use. I've had a total blast. I'm a little bit wiped out. This was supposed to take two or three hours, not uh, coming up on six and a half hours now. <laughs> and I've not had enough coffee. That's for damn sure. But the end result is an absolutely beautiful plane. Uh, there are gonna be some changes that have to be made uh, to make it work. I'm, I'm probably gonna have to make a, a new wedge. I can't believe that my first plane is uh, actually functional. And this damn pretty. So that blade is a tad narrower than the rebate section. And uh, I need to fix that. So, Sandy, Sandy. Next day, playing around with this beautiful thing, and the, the, the blade still kept on just pushing out. Uh, the temporary fix of the sandpaper in the side uh, to make the wedge wide enough, it was temporary and compressing and all that jazz. So I'm in the process of making a new little wedge, which is already improving everything. I, I was worried, actually, that the, the fact that the blade is wedge-shaped and going from thick to thin, it, when you put pressure on the blade, it's loosening itself. I was worried that I was going to have to go and find another blade that was parallel or wedge shaped the other way. But uh, we're there, it's working better. The issue is actually one of chip clearance. I've opened the mouth out again and I've got a little cut to do and I figured since the video isn't out yet, I'd come back. So I, I haven't finished the, the new wedge, it's experimentation. Um, here is the older one, which is a little bit more delicate. Uh, that shape there did mean that the blade wasn't being pushed down uh, hard enough at the edge. Uh, now, the other thing is I'm going to cut an angle to help clear the chips. So this side is still gonna look as it currently does. But um, well, we'll see how that goes. And that should clear the chips into, into my hand, like so. Uh, we'll see. So that fits perfectly now.
Hmm. Maybe that'll work better. All right, this is actually working quite well. We can make that a little bit bigger. Yeah, there we go. Time for some finish. Oil. Being careful not to get it in the wrong places this time. Thank you very much for watching. Click like, subscribe, check out the live streams on the Crimson Guitars Extras channel. If you haven't yet subscribed to the Crimson Guitars Extras channel, go over and do that. Sunday evenings there's a live stream, uh, a whole question thing, and we're going to be doing more builds. And just my day in general will be streamed uh, every now and then. Uh, not every day, but uh, it's all fun. So thank you for watching. See you soon. Goodbye.